My name is Brett Arnish, I'm 23, and this is my farm in Keensburg, Colorado. Brett Arnish is a young, young farmer. The fourth generation, working land on the rim of the Prospect Valley, a short drive from Denver. Working for his father, Mark, Brett walks the heritage of this farm. He knows it's a business changing rapidly. I'm a fourth generation farmer. My great grandparents came here from Germany right after World War II and this was the same land that they farmed. And to me, heritage is everything. Uh, these acres, they farmed, my grandfather farmed, my dad farmed, and now it's my turn. And that's something very special that I hold near and dear. Mark Arnish Farms is diverse. Corn for grain, silage, alfalfa, seed wheat and seed barley, and wheat and barley for the craft brew and spirits industries. Brett's own Arnish Hay Company will be 365 acres next year. After high school, I wasn't absolutely sure where my journey was going to go. So I decided to go to college and I learned a lot along the way, uh, but something kept bringing me back to the farm. And so I decided to give it a shot, come back to the farm, find a position, and I truly found a love and a niche where I can fit in well with the communications and the agricultural technology side of things. Farming is producing crops, sure, but farming in 2020 is also data and analysis to guide the production, to build markets that meet the specific demands of the customer. Making my own way doesn't necessarily mean that I'm farming like my dad did or like my grandfather did or like my great-great-grandfather did. It doesn't mean I'm just going to work really hard and long, gruesome hours and hope everything works out. It's a lot of crunching numbers, it's a lot of understanding where your market is, and it's also running your, your market in reverse, starting with the end user and working it back to each acre. At the DTN Progressive Farmer Ag Summit a year ago, Brett heard a new term, decommoditization. Last year at the DTN conference, I heard Quint Pottinger speak about the decommoditization of a commodity. And I really took that home with me and I really worked that through. To decommoditize a commodity means that you're not at the mercy of the marketplace. You're the commander of your own destiny. Commander of your own destiny? Brett says it's about knowing your customers' needs and taking those back to the acre that will best meet them. The reverse marketing idea that we have in our farm is simple. It's to start with the end user and work it backward to our acre. For example, we start with a beer and work it back to our acre. So how can we make our wheat crop the best possible wheat crop for that beer? It comes with a lot of technology, comes with a lot of data processing, and truly understanding what goes into that beer. Mark and Brett created a new position on Arnish Farms. Brett calls it data comprehension. He works as a kind of digital wrench turner on the farm. So my job is that I specialize in data comprehension. And in a nutshell, that means a lot of time spent on the computer. But what it really means in the field is understanding what our cost per acre is and what our return on investment is. So this is somewhat of a new position and not very many people completely understand what my role is, even people on our own farm. But moving into the future, by seeing the true numbers at the end of the year, I think that that will start to swing and the momentum will start to shift to where my position isn't the rare one. The data that we're collecting today is just a stepping stone for the data we'll be collecting in the future. It won't be necessarily on the per acre level, it won't necessarily be per on the ounce level, but it's going to truly take the precision to decision. It'll be prescriptive analytics that'll tell you, hey, we're probably going to be getting some stripe rust here pretty soon. You might want to think about spraying. It was an old style marketing idea in which Brett found a new opportunity, a market short of alfalfa. The first crop that I actually have under sprinkler on my farm is alfalfa. And the reason why I planted alfalfa is through custom delivering of hay for local customers in the area, they always asked for more, asked for more, and we didn't have enough. And so I saw that market signal, planted 60 acres of my own, and now soon I'm going to be rolling into second cutting for a very hot market. This is land that has provided for families over four generations. It's a really special thing to be able to farm these acres because my great-grandfather could have stepped in the exact same area that I am and the memories that come with it. My dad recalls 
times where he was harvesting sugar beets in a twin screw truck and just knowing that this land provided for my family not just for one, not just for two, not just for three, but now for four generations. Brett is Arnish Farms' fourth generation and he is a member of agriculture's millennial generation. Being a millennial farmer is a neat but yet daunting task at the same time. There's not very many of us out there and not very many farm families are having their son or daughters come back. And so for me, I feel that I need to blaze a path and show that farming isn't the same as it used to be. There's a lot of technology, there's new waves, there's new niches. There's a lot of exciting things going on in ag and I really want my generation to know.